Thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is three packages that will really help in your Flutter development experience. So let's get on with video. Okay, for the first one, Google Fonts. And I think Google Fonts is one of the packages that really solves a major pain point which is having fonts that is easily available for anyone to use. And they have over 977 fonts in this library. And it's as easy as just putting Google fonts dot something to change your font style. So there are different ways for you to use the Google fonts text theme. Either you can call their function or load the font dynamically using a text and also you can override the existing text style with your different properties that you want to change like colors or letter spacing or you can override it using the properties that you already have set for example display one but with the google font style that you want or you want to even override it by doing this so there is many ways for you to set your Google fonts or your specific fonts that you need to use. So if you want to choose any fonts that is available inside the Google fonts library, you can go to the Google fonts website. Google fonts is really one of a very good product that the material team have created for Flutter. So I'm going to do a short demo. So I have with me a simple app. And then the first thing that you need to do is, of course, have the Google Fonts inside your pub spec YAML. The second thing is you can either import it like this. And then after that, for example, I want to override this welcome text style with a Google font that I'm going to choose. So for example, I want to choose Modec. So it only has one style. What I mean by one style is that if you were to go to another one with like more than one style, for example, Lato. So these are the different properties that you can use inside the specific text style. For example, this is the font size, like thin. So you have the number to represent it. And then you have the different styles like italic and bold, if I'm not wrong. But for now, we want to use this modec. So make sure you import the Google fonts, then type in Google fonts dot and let's see if modec appears so it might be a bit laggy because it has over a thousand of this so you see modec is yep modec is found so the next thing is you want to use this headline to property but with the modec text style so let's put in text style and then let's wait for a while all right so if you save this now you could see that it is changed. The text style has been changed, but the property of headline two is still remained. That's the pretty cool thing about Google fonts. So the next thing that can improve your productivity is this thing called Font Awesome Flutter. So for those who don't know what is Font Awesome, it is an icon pack that you can use. So the difference between the default icon pack that Flutter provides is that it doesn't have social media icons for example you can use facebook and these icons will be available inside the font awesome flutter icon pack so it is pretty simple and it also has the different styles that you have like regular solid and brands so instead of using an icon widget it uses a font awesome icon widget that is being provided inside this font awesome package so you just copy this and let's go back to our demo app and make sure that inside your pub spec demo you have your font awesome flutter package so let's import it all right the next thing is that we have a icon add over here so what we can do is we can change this into fa icon so you can change these icons to font awesome icons and then you can use for example facebook let's put in facebook all right, let's save it. And you can see that Facebook icon has been appeared. And you can see that the Facebook icon appears. So what's the difference between this FA icon and a normal icon widget? So the FA icon or the Font Awesome icon widget provided by the library is meant for the Font Awesome icons. However, icon 
assumes that all icons are square. So font awesome icon will not work inside the default icon widget. So make sure you use the font awesome icons and they also have the different FAQs that you could see over here. So if it doesn't show up in your mobile devices or your, or your website or how you can use your pro icons, it's all inside the documentation. So good job on that. The next one that I want to share with you is animations. So I think this is very useful if you just want to have an animation inserted anywhere without you specifying or creating a lot of boilerplate. This is created by the Flutter team and it has these four basic animations. So it is the material motion that they have created for Flutter. The first one is container transform. It looks fantastic. So basically it just resizes the image. It looks like hero widgets that's being used, but it is even more than that. So it expands the widget that you click on it. So it's pretty cool. The next thing that I really like is the shared axis because this gives a very nice fade in animation for your different pages or screens of your Flutter app. So for example, you want to transit to the next screen. It looks like it is fade in and slide accordingly. So either X, Y axis or the Z axis where it zooms in. The next thing is fade through. So it is just a normal fade through kind of animations. So you just transit according to whichever screen that you want to see. So it has the tab or your refresh or even your different users inside. For example, your email app. And lastly, the fade pattern, which is used for elements to enter or exit within the bounds of the screen. So you could see that there are different widgets that appear from the center and disappears. So we are going to create a simple example using a dialogue that fades in the center of the screen. A little demo that I've created is very simply just using a configuration for your model that you want to show. So inside show model, you can use this fade scale transition configuration. So it will use this configuration to show this example alert dialog that I have. So if I were to press this Facebook button, you could see that the alert dialog appears with this fade scale transition. So if I were to slow down by using this Flutter scheduler package, which only shows me the time dilation, I can overwrite it. So let me put 2.0 and let me save this. And if I were to click again, you could see the fade in really nicely over here. Sadly, my computer is not exactly fast, but right. So let's see again. Yeah. So if I were to slow it down even further, Let's put it 3.0. Let's cancel this. And then, yes, you can see that the alert dialog from small to big. So it scales up and at the same time it fades in. So I really like that animation. So I only use one transition and there is many transition that you can use. If you want to know how you can go to this link, I will put it inside the description and this will show you the examples of how to use the other transitions like container transition and shared access transitions. So all the best. So that's it about these three animations. At the same time, I want to give shout out to certain packages that I think will be useful in certain cases. So the first one is custom refresh indicator. If you want to have a custom refresh indicator, use this package. So how it works is that it gives you this indicator control that allows you to refresh once you push down to the armed position. So one thing that I really want to talk about is this example. So you have this aeroplane kind of custom refresh indicator, which is pretty, pretty cool. Alright, so one thing that I want to show is this ice cream indicator that they have. So it's pretty cool. So once you drag all the way down, then it will have the spoon swing from the left to right to indicate it's loading. So that's pretty nice. So I think the star of the show is this envelope indicator. It's pretty, pretty cool. I really like this animation. So when you scroll all the way down, you could see that the envelope will appear from left and right and have this button indicator in the middle, which is fantastic. So shout out to this freaking cool refresh indicator. The next package that I think is pretty cool is this sliding up panel. So I think one thing that 
a lot of people wanted to do is this sliding up panel. It's not available by default in Flutter if I'm not wrong. So this helps you to push your widgets up on top and then you can have the different scrollable widgets inside this sliding up panel. So it has a lot of examples and ex so he explains to you how you can configure, for example, how you can change the darkness when you slide up the widget, how you can change your widget into something else. So this is the collapse widget and such. And then you can have this curved widget that I think a lot of people like. So check it out, sliding up panel. And the last one is Flutter Storyboard by Roddy Davis. So this is a very good idea because I think a lot of people, they want to see all of their screens at one go. So it is called like a storyboard. And the thing is, I think this is a really good idea. However, just one critique is that since it's using Flutter Web as your storyboard or how you are going to see your different screens, it actually will be laggy. So you could see the jankiness that appears over here. So you could see that if you have a lot of screens, it can be really very laggy. And then the zooming in and zooming out, it's not as dynamically as I want it to be kind of thing. The only way for you to zoom in and zoom out is to use this plus and minus over here. And then if you want to go back to the home, you can press this button. So this is not clearly explained what this button is. And then if you were to zoom in all the way and when you press the number over here, it resets to 75%. But honestly, this is a very, very good idea. I think this will solve a lot of problems. And for example, you have a counter example, you can just interact with it. So, and then you have your different routes that you have created over here. So I think this is a very good idea. I think if you really want to have this thing really work for you, I think this should be built not in Flutter Web. Until Flutter Web becomes very, very fast and non janky at all, then I think this is a very good package or even a service that you can provide for any Flutter people. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe and comment down below of what packages that you think is really helpful in your Flutter development. So, Stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye.